26 to 2017. The reason I'm going to seek 2017, well, here I am. Seek 2017, it's gonna be great. Oh hey, guess who I just ran into? Right here. <laughs> this is Aiden from Celtic Catholic Fire. And this is Cutter from Rise of Christ. Alright. This is crazy. Yeah. So subscribe to this channel, he puts out really awesome stuff. Funny funny story. Once we both went to college, our first episodes were about Mary. Ironic. True. true. Very true. You should subscribe to him. He puts out videos much more often than I do. Yeah, because so <laughs> I have no life. <laughs> Still they're very good videos though. Thanks, so. brother, thanks. Hey guys, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, I found another NCG YouTuber. Hey guys, it's Pure Medic Cards. Yeah, Pure Medic Kaiser from Youth and Sandals. We're here at Seek 2017. <laughs> All right. I'm hoping to do maybe a collab or a meetup with everyone in the next day or two, so keep posted for that. Hey guys, just finished up for the first full day at Seek, and I have to say it's been a really, really great experience so far. Got to listen to some great talks, and as I'm sure you've already seen, I got to meet up with a couple other New Catholic Generation YouTubers, so it's been really great so far. What I want to focus on tonight is the, um, the independent sessions. And there were some great talks ranging from things on the mass, to things on apologetics, some stuff on politics, more men's and women's sessions, and... Uh, a whole variety of things. Scott Hahn, Dr. Scott Hahn, gave two talks. I attended one. It was really amazing. But anyways, what I want to talk about is sort of the general theme connecting both of the talks I attended today. The first one was on a woman who converted from atheism to Catholicism and her journey in that sense, both intellectually and spiritually. And the second one was the aforementioned talk by Dr. Scott Hahn, talking about the relationship between Catholicism and Islam. And so the obvious connection between both of them is that they're both about Catholicism and its relationship to another faith. And so since I'm sort of working through my own sort of discernment process, spiritual journey on this Sikh conference, especially in terms of figuring out what do I do next? What more can I do? What can I do additionally in my spiritual life? And part of that is this YouTube channel. And so I thought that a really key part of that is knowing how to reach not just Catholics, but non-Catholics as well. And so to that extent, these talks were actually really useful. There's some great advice uh, this woman gave on, uh, I'll subtitle her name down below because I don't know it off the top of my head. Uh, um, but some good advice this woman gave on entering into a dialogue with atheists and learning how to speak that language in a way that, speak the language of Christianity in a way that atheists can understand and, rec and recognize the value in. The talk that Dr. Scott Hahn gave on Islam was also really, really interesting in that regard. It wasn't as much focused on the dialogue piece as it was sort of the similarities and differences between the two religions, mostly focusing on how the conception of God is actually different in Christianity than in Islam. I know some people say that Christians and Muslims worship the same God. That isn't entirely accurate, and Dr. Scott Hahn focused a lot on our perceptions of God as Father and how that really, really isn't shared in the Muslim world. Um, I, so I have to say, it, it wasn't quite as useful for the dialogue piece, but it was still really, really interesting, really engaging, and it actually gave me some pieces I needed to help finish a video I was struggling with, another entry in the YB Catholic series, in terms of Catholic dialogue with Protestants. Because he, he connected it really, really well to everything from salvation to the, to the ideas of the Trinity and some of, his, some of his personal experiences. So I have to say I have never seen anything of, anything of Scott Hans before. I've heard of him. I've heard of his sort of resume and biography. This is the first talk or work of his that I've seen. And I conclude that I need to see more of it because his speech was absolutely amazing. Probably the best one I've seen today. But anyways, so I just wanted to share sort of my thoughts on the day so far that I'm sort of... I spent today taking the independent sessions as a chance to further my understanding of how to dialogue with other religions since that's sort of the purpose of this channel. So yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow with another round of talks and reflections and hopefully a collab between me and some of the other New Catholic Generation YouTubers. All right, we just finished up mass and we're about to get started with the first session of the day. Day two, that is. It's going to be great. All right, guys, rounding out the YouTuber meetup trio, we have Mary Lena Blail, our proudly Catholic cellist. I'm sorry, did I horribly mispronounce your name? Yes, it's fine. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. All right, about to start the last keynote of the night, and see you guys later tonight. 
Hey guys, wrapping up day two, technically day three, but really day two of the Seek 2017. Really exciting, really interesting. The big highlight of the day was Adoration. Adoration was excellent. If you've never been to Adoration with 13,000 people at once, I highly recommend it. It's quite the experience. <laughs> I also got a chance to meet up with a couple more YouTubers, as you probably saw. And I also had the unique experience of running into an actual fan of my channel. I didn't know I had fans, so thank you for that. Thank you everyone who's watching this for enjoying my videos and getting something out of them. I really appreciate that. Anyways, though, my big takeaways for today were have to do with hearing God's voice or knowing God's will. Since I'm working through an active discernment process of my own, as well as discerning how to keep moving forward with this channel and things like that, hearing God's voice in prayer is a really important part of that, and it's not always something I've found easy. But today, over the course of some of the lectures and the presentations, and my own experience at Adoration, actually, I've come to realize two very important principles about hearing God's voice or discerning God's voice. The first of which, and this is something really obvious I wish I had thought of myself instead of having to have it told to me, is that you can't know how to listen to God's voice unless you read his word. And I mean, in hindsight, this is really obvious. You can't really know how to distinguish between your own thoughts and things God is trying to tell you if you don't really understand God's word, how God speaks to people through the Bible. And so having daily and regular scripture readings, particularly Lectio Divina, is a really great way to help, co help cultivate your ability to hear God in prayer. And the other thing is something I learned tonight through somewhat my own experience and some reasoning through things is that I've come to the conclusion that there are two things and two things only that can provoke a really dramatic response of internal conflict in the human heart. The first of those things is temptation to sin, and the second of those things is clear knowledge of the will of God. <laughs> So in other words, just like you try to resist temptation when you feel like you're being tempted, we also have this really horrible innate instinct to, when you know God wills something, your first instinct is not, okay, I'd better do this, but it's, but I don't want to do that, God. Why? And, and you see this in things like the book of Jonah, too. Jonah's whole thing is he's a prophet. He knows God's will. And he doesn't like God's will, in this case, because he knows he's going to spare this, this city of Nineveh, when he would rather it not be spared because they're persecuting the Jews. So instead of going to Nineveh to preach conversion, he flees off, and then you have the whole episode with the whale. So, I mean, this, this demonstrates as well that same sort of principle that... The more you're certain of God's will, the more likely you are to have a knee-jerk response against it if it doesn't line up with your own priorities. And that's something I've learned in today that it's I, something I need to work on. It's something where I need to grow spiritually. And I figured it might be an interesting or useful thing for you, for you all to hear and reflect on as well. Anyways, I'll see you guys tomorrow for the third main day of the conference. It's been really great so far. Because he's a man who's Here we go, guys. Watch success this. Success in the world as a platform. Like I said, now, he's used here way. we go. He's established his Wrapping up here from the third and final full day of Seek 2017, it's been a really, really amazing experience. I'm somewhat upset that this thing's only every other year instead of every year. It's been a great conference so far. I probably won't get a chance to do a live recap from the last day since it's only about a half session and I have a plane to catch pretty quickly. So this will sort of be my, my set of concluding thoughts before I'm able to go home and really write something out for my overall take on the conference. But just to let you know, it's been absolutely amazing. I would highly recommend going to this if you're a college student. Um, <laughs> but my thoughts on today specifically. So between the different various talks I went to and the keynotes for today, there was a really strong overarching theme of taking these principles and these ideas that are really strongly present, and really obvious at a conference like this, these emotions, this connection with the Lord, and taking that and being able to apply that after the conference. Because that's something, you know, I've struggled with in the past, going on retreats, the Stupidville Conference, things like that, and taking that feeling of being right with God and knowing his will for my life and 
being able to live in the way he want me, wants me to live, and being able to continue to apply that after the conference or the retreat is over has not always been so easy. So today has really been focused on that with various talks between talking about how to fight temptation or how to help you live as a saint, not just by yourself, but as a community with a community of friends who are also saints, as well as a set of talks on just generally how to take these ideas and apply them once we get out of and past seek. And so there are a couple things I'd like to highlight for you, for you all that I thought were really, really profound. And the first of which is, of course, constant reliance on prayer and the sacraments, because that's the only way we can get through this. The, being able to stick to those things is the only way that we can continue to feel the grace of God in our lives in this way, because these are the institutions he has put in place to help us do so. Reading the scriptures, praying every day, praying very deeply every day, I should say, and going to the sacraments regularly weekly, if not daily, mass, monthly, if not weekly, confession. You, you see the general idea. Another really important thing I took from today is that you have to be a part of a community to be able to do this. Whether that's being a part of a community that will hold you accountable in terms of resisting temptation, or improving your connection with the Lord, or getting a spiritual director, or helping to discern your vocation, or anything like that. The general striving for sainthood in your daily life has to be done in a community. That all of the saints come, as one of the speakers put it, saints travel in packs. <laughs> you have a Saint Francis of Assisi, but you also have a Saint Clare. You have a Saint Augustine, then you also have a, um, oh, what's his face? Saint Athanasius. There you go, Saint Athanasius. <laughs> oh, no, that's not right. What's a, what was Augustine's bishop's name again before he was named bishop? I should do research on that. There'll be a subtitle right about here with that information. Sorry, can't remember that off the top of my head. <laughs> or like for every St. Thomas Aquinas, there's a St. Anselm. You see my point, that to be a saint, you have to be in a community that is striving for sainthood. Or at the very least, a community that is striving to live a Christ-centered life. And on that note, probably the most important thing is taking this relationship with God, this relationship with Christ, and really placing it at the center of your life, making that the most important thing. Taking from this conference, this connection with the Lord, connection with God the Father, and with Christ, and with the Holy Spirit, and saying that this is something I want to continue. I want to follow in Christ's path, not just be a believer, but truly a disciple, following the path of Christ, taking up his yoke, as he says in the scriptures. So really, that's probably the most important thing taking that, taking this path of discipleship that we're called to walk and making following that path the most important thing in your life, the most important thing that we're going to follow and is going to help guide all of our other actions and decisions throughout our lives, through every moment of every day. And that's really how we take these amazing experiences you have at like a Steubenville conference or seek or a retreat or a mission trip and take that and Continue to live in a way that is holy and Christ-centered in your daily life. So anyways, I will probably see you guys as we're wrapping up the conference or as I'm hopping in my taxi or in the airport or something. And then again, a sort of a concluding video. So thank you for sticking through me with this. Thanks for sticking with me through all this. And thank you for all your support with this channel. Hey everyone, about to wrap up the final conference day of SEEK, going into the main closing keynote now. It's going to be great. See you guys there. I have no idea whether you can hear me over the music, but we have some of the best seats in the building right now for the closing session. It's going to be great. Also, everyone from Notre Dame wanted to be on the internet, I guess, so say hi to the group from Notre Dame. But anyways, closest we've been to the stage all week. Let's do this thing. All right, everyone, so the thing was done. <laughs> Just got out of the last set of keynotes for the seat conference. Unfortunately, I have a plane to catch, so I can't stay for the closing mass, but it's been a great experience so far. Great experience overall. I'd highly recommend it. It's really just continued to set me on fire for the phase. So, I'll see you guys back in Colorado or in Notre Dame, depending on when I film this recap. Hey, everyone. So, it's been about a day since I've been back, and I just wanted to do a quick recap of my thoughts on the conference overall. First things first, a huge shout out to all the other YouTubers I met up with there, uh, Proudly Catholic Cellist, 
Youth in Sandals slash Be Right of Christ and Rise of Jerusalem. All amazing people with really great channels. I'll link them down below or in the video right here. You should definitely check them out and subscribe to them if you haven't already. Really excellent people, really excellent vloggers. Also, a shout out to the guys at the Crunch Podcast. The Crunch Catholic Podcast, I should say. I was introduced to one of their members during one of the talks at Seek, and they ended up being my in-flight entertainment on the way home. Really great podcast full of wit and wisdom from a couple of just really great Catholic guys. Highly recommended. Link for that as well. Uh, over here this time. <laughs> um, anyways, so my thoughts on Seek overall. Excellent, excellent conference. Probably ranks above Steubenville, in my opinion, just for a variety of reasons. But um, I would say, after some reflection, that I feel like Seek is the G.K. Chesterton of Catholic youth conferences. Here's why. It's huge. It's hilarious. It has a really great and deep uh, understanding of the faith. And it helps to educate others in the faith. See? It's the G.K. Chesterton of Catholic conferences. <laughs> but, so essentially what I think Seek does really well is strike at the very fundamental aspects of the faith. It illustrate our Catholic faith both in, it, both in its simplicity and in its depth and, com and complexity. So a lot of the keynotes really focused on these really fundamental parts of the faith, that God's love. The love of God the Father, the love of Jesus Christ. These fundamental, simple-sounding building blocks that our faith is, is built upon. But when you actually get into the depth of it, those things have a lot of implications, culminating in Christ's death on the cross for our salvation. And the other thing that the conference did really well was exploring all these different aspects of our faith in such depth. Whether you're talking discernment, or your prayer life, or apologetics, or resisting temptation, or any other number of things. There was an amazing series of sessions with great speakers on a wide variety of topics. You could essentially listen to some of the best, most faithful Catholic speakers, evangelists, priests, fathers, sisters in America at this conference speaking on all the various aspects of our faith. This is an amazing conference for me. It gave me a close encounter with the Lord and also gave me a great drive to continue working on this channel, continue this sort of web ministry, if you will, with New Catholic Generation, and <laughs> inspired me with some new video topics, helped to patch some holes in videos I've been already working on, so that was really great. And yeah, it's just been an it was an excellent conference. I would highly recommend it. And I hope to be still in, still doing this channel in two years. So if you're in college and you plan on going to Seek 2019, like I definitely am, hopefully I'll see you there. So bye everyone, and I'll be back soon with more videos. And I almost forgot, on Horum Dei Gloriam, for the greater glory of God, always. Amen.